everyone and welcome back to my channel welcome back to adora hack my name is adora and in this video i'm going to be talking about data structures that are commonly asked in top tech interviews if you're currently preparing for a tech interview or you know someone who does i would appreciate it if you watch this video and you share this video to these people also I'm going to be telling you what these data structures are because there are lots of data structures that exist. I'm going to be telling you what these data structures are, but if you want me to do subsequent videos where I take each data structure and I bring you like a normal software engineering problem and we solve it together on this channel, if that's something that you're going to be interested in, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to do it. Let's get right into the video. structure is arrays I think arrays are the most common data structures an array would be let me give the computer science definition of an array I think an array is a finite set of elements of the same type an array is a finite set so when you want to define an array you mostly say okay I want an array of this fixed size so sometimes you would get array related questions sometimes somebody will tell you to sort an array in place or different things like that. Arrays are very common data structures that are usually asked. The next data structure I want to talk about is linked lists. Linked lists are another common data structure. So when you think about arrays, arrays have, I don't know what the English word is, but they literally follow each other in memory. So I have this memory block and this is my value and the next value is the next value in the array and the next value is the next value in the array. But with linked lists, they don't really follow each other in memory if that makes sense a linked list is basically a collection of nodes a node has two properties the first property is the value of that node and the second property is a pointer to the next node how you would know a linked list has ended is that the next property of that last element does not point anywhere in that case linked lists don't need to follow each other in memory I can be on my own chilling on this side of the CPU. I just need the address to the next element. That element doesn't have to be sitting beside me. We don't have to be sitting partners. One node points to the next node and sometimes depending on the kind of linked list, it's previous node. So I can have two pointers, one pointing to my next node, one pointing to my previous node and then I have the value of my own node. There are different kinds of linked lists. There's the singly linked list, which is the one that just points to the next node. Then there's the doubly linked list, which is the one that points to the next node and the previous node. There's the circular linked list. Circular linked lists don't have a last node because normally what would happen is the last node in that linked list would have its next pointer pointing to the first node. So it would always be in circles, there would always be a cycle. Different linked list questions could be thrown at you, you know, in interviews. There's one where someone could be like, oh, okay, how would you find a loop or a cycle in a linked list and how would you break that loop or break that cycle? You might think about intuitive ways to solve that problem. You know, sometimes you might solve that problem by, like I know that there are multiple, there are multiple solutions for that problem. There's one solution that maybe requires you to have two pointers one fast pointer, one slow pointer and when you finally, when the two pointers meet you know that there's a loop somewhere and then you stop it because I mean the faster one will be moving like two or three steps and the slower one will just be moving one step, one step, one step, one step but when they finally meet then it's like they finally reach the same place and it makes sense so in that scenario you know yes some people also could go ahead and use some kind of data structure and they're like oh okay I'm going to put, when I go on each node in the linked list i'm going to put it in some kind of data structure and when i get to the next node i'll do a lookup and if i've seen that node before i will know some people go ahead to introduce something called a visited flag so it's like okay when i when i reach a node i mark it that I visited it and i keep marking every single node that I visited it and if i get back to a node that i visited before i know that i'm in a loop and i can break out of that loop so there are different ways to solving these problems. The next one I want to talk about is a stack. And a stack is the last thing first out uh, data structure. Oh, fantastic. I have books here. Great. So, so I have these books on my stack, right? Or rather, I have, I have this stack. My hand is the stack. I've declared the stack, right? The stack is empty. And I come and I'm like, okay, I'm going to push living by the code onto that stack. And I've pushed it. Right, so now I have living by the code on that stack. Now this is the top of my stack. 
I come here and I say I'm going to push accelerate onto that stack and I just do that I push accelerate onto the stack and now this is my new top so there's no way I can remove leaving by the code without removing accelerate first and then I come and I'm like okay I want to add this financial survival in a certain times book onto my stack and I come and I add it now this is the top of my stack there's no way I can remove accelerate or leaving by the code without removing this first. stacks do a lot of things in reverse a very common stack example would be if you get an interview question you know this is not the optimal example this is not the optimal solution but this is a solution if you get an interview question where they tell you that you should reverse a string the quickest way to do it is to push all the characters in that string onto a stack and pop everything because like i said what was added last is going to be removed first following this pattern the next thing i want to talk about is a queue like a stack a queue is also some kind of other other type data structure but it's a first in first out data structure so with queues the first thing that enters the queue is the first thing that comes out let's look at if you want to buy food and you are on a line at some kind of you know fast food or kiosk or restaurant or whatever the first person i mean in a normal society let's not talk about the fact that people jump queues and i save space for my friend let's leave that into our pocket first but like in an ideal situation right the first person that would get attended to was the person that got to the line first and that's the way the queue works when you end queue you are adding stuff to a queue and when you dequeue you are removing stuff from a queue so let's look at graphs so a graph has a set of nodes or vertices and then a set of edges and the edges from like one node to another node are used to denote connections in that graph so there are things called directed and undirected graphs let's say we have a graph that has like three nodes a b c there's a line from a to b so that edge would be called a b so a and b are connected and the name of the edge is a b there's a line from a to c and that edge will be called a c because a and c are connected so in that light that's how you think about you know connections in a graph another kind of data structure that could be asked is a tree and trees are used for so many things you can use trees a certain type of trees to solve an um, autocomplete problem you can use binary search trees to find like different things um so let's look at this tree right here this tree has a node and it has three children it has a node a and then it has child b c and d you know when i talked about linked list and i said linked list points from one node to the other think about a tree like a linked list as well but this time around a tree can point to a node in a tree can point to more than one child so in a linked list if you're trying to define maybe a linked list in code you would say the data structure for a linked list would be the data in that linked list and a pointer to the next node in a tree you would have the data on that tree and a pointer to the list of next nodes if that makes sense because in a tree you can have one or more children for lack of a better word this is an example of another tree where you can see here some nodes on this tree have two children some nodes on this tree have four children some nodes on this tree have no child there are many kinds of trees there are red black trees there are B trees, there are binary trees. The final data structure I want to talk about, hash tables. There are data structures that have constant time lookup, for example. So if I put anything in my hash map and I want to get that thing out, if I do a lookup on my hash map, my data is returned to me in constant time. I've talked about arrays, I've talked about linked lists, stacks, queues, graph trees, and hash maps. If you are interested in sending questions my way for us to solve on youtube together send those questions my way and i'll be glad to do a video that actually solves that question or you can tell me that oh you want me to you know go in depth with any of these data structures as subsequent videos and that's something i'll be glad to do as well i'll be glad to launch a data structure series for you all thank you so much for watching this video to the end if you liked it please make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you are not subscribed to me please make sure that you're subscribed. I would really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button here. Give this video a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.